guys, welcome back to Freeze Drying Mama. I hope you're having a good day. We're talking about eggs today. And I did a post on the site about how to do raw eggs and how, you know, the, the steps and stuff that you need to take. But I did get some questions from some people. Um, if you'll see the post on freezedryingmama.com, you'll see where I have to go in because I have one of those those weird fridges um, where the bottom is my pull-out freezer and then I've got the fridge on top. So on the bottom, what I did is I had pulled out the shelves or I left the, that one shelf basket thing in and then I like poured in, I'd like maneuver and be like my daughter and contortion in and pour the egg in there. And, and I had someone say, well, what do I do if I don't have that kind? It's a great question. So we're going to actually show you my other method of doing raw eggs today. And what we're getting into is just a few of the, of the topics that we need to discuss with raw eggs. Um, so I'm going to be using a stand-up freezer to show you today how I pre-freeze my raw egg materials before I put them in the freeze dryer. Now I've done it without uh, pre-freezing. And I just dumped it when I was in the, you know, when I had the, the freeze dryer. I pulled the tray out, dump it in, and really, really carefully push it in. And that worked out fine. However... The pump turns on um, your your freeze dryer, as you know, if you'll go through the startup videos, the starter and beginner videos. The freeze dryer does a pre-freeze, so it's like 10 hours, right? 10 to 12 hours, depending on what your default settings are or what you select. However, <laughs> the pump turns on at like 7 or 8 hours, depending on what the item is. And I did that. I put my eggs in, and it's a viscous material, so it doesn't freeze as fast as some of the other materials and items that you do. And I had egg everywhere in my, it was everywhere. Um, so I, I highly recommend pre-freezing your raw egg items, uh, raw soups, raw milk, you know, anything that's not frozen, anything that's in a liquid state. Uh, sour cream, for instance, that one ruined my, my whole, <laughs> that took forever to clean up. I thought egg was bad. No, the sour cream was the worst. So I'd recommend that that's what you do is you pre-freeze it. And I'm going to show you, so if you go in and you see my egg, post on my website, you'll see how I did it with an under the freezer thing. I really did kind of like sneak in there and use the subterfuge of, you know, going underneath where it was actually accessible. I'm not supposed to put anything down there and I did it. I'm a rule breaker. And then I'm going to show you how to do use a standard stand-up freezer. Um, uh, if you check out Retired Under 40, I'll put a link in below. He actually shows you how to use a, a chest freezer and he has like these really cool wire uh, shelving things. I don't have those yet. I don't have a stand-up freezer. I mean, uh, I don't have a chest freezer. My husband doesn't like them. So we get the stand-up one. So I'm going to show you what we do there. But we're talking about eggs today. and you, So you can see that right here I've got a whole bunch of these um, 60 eggs. You can buy five dozens, you know, in a box. I buy these from Walmart or I get something similar at Super One or Winco or Costco, wherever I'm going. And these ones I think at Walmart are like five bucks a box. So they're really cheap. Um, I also do organic eggs. Uh, my friend has chickens. We used to have chickens, but it got to be a headache. <laughs> I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, but we, so, and so I highly recommend picking eggs. Of course, organic's always better, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? When you're just trying to bulk save up stuff and you just kind of want things, you know, you want to store up stuff as much as you can and you don't care, go for the $5 a box, $4.75 a box or whatever it is. Just go for whatever you can. And don't be organic shamed, okay? But if you do do organic, um, we, we're going to talk about size difference today um, with along with our egg thing. So you can see I've got a four cup measuring cup of eggs here. I did these ones. They're organic because I'm doing some for my friend for chickens. Um, they had a huge, right before they molted, they did like this huge egg thing. They got like 16 dozen in a week or something. I mean, it was ridiculous. So I was like, I'll bring some over. I'll freeze dry some for you. Um, so I've got some here, four cups. So four cups in the standard 60 egg thing, the large white eggs is about a dozen and a half, two dozen. Okay, I can usually pinpoint it right exactly. I don't have my notes right here, but you can, I can usually pinpoint it exactly and I can say it's going to be X amount of eggs from these ones because they all look the same. They're all the same. However, when you go over into the organic eggs and they come from the same batch of chickens, they're different. So we have a large egg and we have a large egg, <laughs> but they're different, right? They're different sizes. So I can't say, oh, we're going to do two dozen of these and it's going to equal four cups or two dozen of these and it's going to equal four cups and they're the different sizes. You can't, you can't do that. So what I do is I measure out. I'm just like, okay, I can fit four cups in my medium. These are medium. I work with the medium size Harvest Right freeze dryer. This is a medium size tray. So I can do four cups 
of eggs mix in one of these. And that allows room for expansion. That allows room for steaks, because I like to spill. And when I show you when I dump it in, it gets kind of sloshy when it's coming in. And so that gives just a little bit of room for the egg to spread. Okay? So that's what I've done in here. I've done, I've done these eggs. I've already, I've already um, put them in whole. Now, some people do like to do them whole. I don't like to do eggs whole uh, because the yolk part is really fatty. And that's really hard for the lyophilization it, it, for the freeze drying. It's really hard um, for it to pull out. But you can do it. It's totally doable. I just like to mix mine and get them mixed up like I'm doing scrambled eggs. And then it just, it freeze, um, when it freeze dries, it's all uniform. It's all really easy. I can tell everything's done. And you'll see at the end of this video how to, how I pull them out and put them into bakes. But for right now, what we're talking about is just getting it, I like to mix it with a fork because you know it's a fork. Now if you know anything about YouTube, you can speed up a YouTube video by the normal speed. You can go up to two times the speed. So if I don't talk fast enough or I don't do the videos fast enough, just change the speed to your liking. It's really easy. It should be up in your top right hand corner of your screen. And you should be able to see it. Okay, so it's pretty fast and I'm not like anal about it. I don't care if it's perfectly mixed or not. I just want those big yolky blobs to be at least broken um, because that's where that's going to hold on to that moisture. And like I said, some people, your mileage is going to vary because some people like doing whole eggs. I don't. I really, really don't. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go out. Um, we're going to go out into the freezer where I have some pans already set up so I can show you how we're going to do that. And my lovely assistant, my daughter, is going to follow me. Awesome. Okay, so you can see my very messy and packed freezer is here. I'm in the top level because this is easiest for me to get in and I know for sure that it's level. I have some frozen meat over here, just ignore that, but this is a space that I need for my, for my trays. So what I'm going to do here, I've got these two trays out here already because I know this fits for me. Please pardon the loudness of the freezer. And then I'm going to take my egg in here and I'm going to slowly and carefully pour it in. The reason you pour it in out here where it's already set is because these trays want to schloss around when you're using them. Now see how I still have clumps and stuff of yolk in there? That's okay. That's totally okay. So I will probably leave that in there for about eight hours. And this is really good. I'll go in and I'll do a whole nother one right now too and come back out and set that one so they are setting. In four hours, I will come out and stack the other two trays across the top and they'll be angled a little bit so they don't set into the eggs. And then what they'll do is freeze, obviously. But what I'm, the reason I'm doing it right now is because my freeze dryer is going with something that was easy to set up. So if you check out my website, you'll see a post on how to rotate your food into a freeze dryer and how to utilize the things that take longer to prep as well as the things that are shorter to prep. So as you can see, the, the eggs will actually freeze just like this. It's great. I'll go in, I'll get the next one ready to go, come out, and let it sit. If you have any questions, visit me at freezedryingmama.com and stay tuned for the rest of the video because I'm going to be showing you how to uh, package this when it's all finished and how to check and make sure it's done. We're getting ready to check the eggs. Okay, so check and see if the eggs are done. They're most likely done. In the summer, it doesn't usually take 42 hours for them to be done. Um, I did put them on longer because I wanted to get some sleep last night. These are finished. So you can see on the eggs how they've pulled away from the tray. And you can see the cracking. This is great. This tells me that this item is actually completely done. It's awesome. The cracking is really great. There's not any, any cold. I'm going to check this one a little bit right here. There you go. Done. And then actually, so you can see, I'm going to have my daughter come in and look at the ice around the drum. Okay, so if you can see, I've got the tray full. I like to just kind of eyeball it. As you know, I'm not a huge measurer. And so we're just breaking it up into wafers. And remember, this is for the raw eggs. And again, it's loud in my house. We've got kids going all over the place. So I just kind of do that. Pull out the wafer like that. And I'll put it into this bag. I'm going to do the Ziploc one because sometimes you don't want to do a whole quart or pint of eggs. You just want to have a little bit to bake with when you're doing it. So there you can see it in there and this is the easiest way to crush it up. Just to do it inside the bake and that's what I'll do. As you can see I have four trays and I can empty them. Half of a tray goes into one bag so I'll get eight bags 
and that will be great. Um, now I have to let that it sit in there and defrost really well, get that done, and that's it. I've got all these eggs, eight cups worth of eggs, or excuse me, four cups worth of eggs in each tray, and that's gonna be some great stuff to put in my food storage. Now the way that I would reconstitute this is for every, um, I would just one to one it. So for every teaspoon of egg powder that I use, I would put one teaspoon of water and that would make it like a raw egg and I could scramble it, I could do um, all kinds of stuff. I can put it into like, if I, have cake, if I have a cake mix and I don't have any access to eggs, I can add this however much they want and that would actually make the egg mix that I would need for the cake. Or I could do omelets so I can add it to pancakes or waffles or so many different things that you can do with it, but this is actually so that I have access to raw eggs in case there something happens and I don't have access to that. So that's what we're going to do for eggs, um, for raw eggs. That's how you freeze dry them and how you reconstitute them and how I package them. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Hit subscribe so you don't miss any more of our food recipes. I want you to stay up to date on exactly how to freeze dry and put your food into storage for a lot longer than just canning. And if you have any recommendations or questions, again, put them in the comments. Uh, we like hearing from you. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you on another video.